Good morning, or depending when you're watching this, good afternoon, good evening, or good night. My name is Ross, and as always told, I had a voice radio, and today... I am delighted to be bringing you a new GX. That's right, ladies and gentlemen, we've looked at a couple new GXs lately, and this one is as exciting as the other ones we've looked at recently. It is Zygarde GX, and this is interesting, because I told you there was a shiny Zygarde GX box coming out, and I told you it was going to be a 50% Zygarde, given that that is the legendary Pokemon that's being given away in June. I told you we were getting a second Zygarde GX to go with a Zygarde GX we've already looked at. I'll pop a link to that one in the description. I was right. Go me. Go Wossy, go Wossy, etc. This could be a very fun card indeed. So starting off then, it is a basic. It's got 180 HP. That is about what we would expect, to be perfectly honest, ladies and gentlemen. It is actually a little bit lower than Zygarde EX, which seems a, a little bit mean. And it's also a bit lower again than Zygarde GX, but then again, it's 50% form rather than 100% form, so I suppose it should have a lower HP, that makes sense. Retreat cost of 2 is the worst one in the game, weakness to grass is a bit of a pain with Golisopod running around, but actually, and I say this every time we have a fighting Pokemon at the moment, but I'm sorry it's true, being a fighting Pokemon is awesome. You are hitting the best weakness in the game, because Zoroark GX is everywhere. You get Regirock EX to do an extra 10 damage. You get Strong Energy to do an extra 20 damage. You get Diancy Prism Star to do an extra 20 damage. And being a basic Pokemon means that you can always use Fighting Fury Belt if you so wish, and you can use Max Elixir to accelerate energy. It is a very good time to be a basic fighting Pokemon. But all of this is for naught if the attacks aren't good. First attack, one colorless energy, 20 damage. It, it's not good. It's not as good as Zygarde EX. It's not as good as Buzzwole. It, it's just not that great. Sure, I mean, you can start getting this higher. I mean, you pop a strong energy on there and it's 40 damage. You pop a Diancy Prism Star on the bench and it goes up to 60 damage. But you can do those same things with a Buzzwall or a Zygarde EX and do more damage. This, ladies and gentlemen, is uninspiring. Second attack, fighting and a double colorless, 80 damage, heal 30 from this Pokemon. This is not actually too bad. Now, what I quite like is that it's very similar to Cell Storm on Zygarde EX, which did 60 and healed 30, but did it for 2 energy rather than 3. Now, the attack cost here isn't amazing, but it, you do get to use double colorless energy. And do remember, like we've already seen, the other Zygarde GX also uses double colorless energy. So you are going to be in good company here. Although, quick public service announcement. Don't use double colorless energy and strong energy if you're using Max Elixir. Because you will not be playing enough basic energy to make the most of it. Healing 30 is always good. You've got 120 HP. You can use Fighting Fury Belt to pop it up. Then you start healing 30 every time you attack. And this will build up pretty quickly. You actually could have a little bit of a tank on your hands. And then, of course, you're doing 80 damage, which sounds really low. But you had a choice band. You're doing 110. There's a one-hit KO on a Zoroark GX, which is quite nice. But let's say, and it's a benchmark I often use in my videos because it's in literally every deck. Tapu Lele, you need to get up to 170 and you might be thinking, oh, that's going to be quite difficult to do. Well, you start off with 80 damage and then you add a strong energy and you're up to 100. Then you add a choice band, you're up to 130. Then you add a Diancy Prism Star and you're up to 150. And then it's either a second strong energy or two Regirock and you're off. It's really not that difficult. Fighting Pokemon at the moment are in an almost absurd position, whereby they can just add so much damage, it's almost ludicrous. I'm not saying this is a great attack, and certainly putting free energy on a Boswell GX will generally be better, but given that it could be two energy with a double colorless, I think this is a worthwhile attack. Two energy attachments to KO a Zoroark, or something like a Tapu Lele, Count me in, ladies and gentlemen. Count me in. But the real highlight of this Zygarde GX is the fact that it's got a Redonkulous GX attack. 
Now, those of you that have been watching for a while will know, I do not like putting extra energy onto a Pokemon just to do the GX attack, because it's once per game, so you're adding extra energy, but you only get to use the attack once, and then it's over. That's annoying. Although, as we're going to see in a minute, it's not actually once when your name is Zygarde. So fighting, fighting, two colorless is expensive, but you can use double colorless. We do have Carbink Break and its Diamond Gift attack at the moment, which allows you to attach two fighting energy from your discard. And let's not forget Zygarde GX, which with its first attack attaches two fighting energy from the discard to itself. And then you could even play something cheeky like Ninja Boy to grab yourself this Zygarde. I'm not saying it's the best plan ever. I'm saying we've got options to get this rolling. Because here's the deal. This is a really good GX attack most of the time. Now, this card was translated and revealed by PokerBeach.com at the moment. It's the only place that's got a translation of this one up. And according to them, and I believe them on this, it does 120 damage for every energy card in your opponent's hand. This is energy card, ladies and gentlemen. So if they've got double colorless energy, that totally counts, but it only counts once. It doesn't count double. Basic energy, special energy, it all counts here. And this, this adds up crazy quick. It's already enough to KO a Zoroark. With just a Choice Band and a Diancy Prison Star, you're doing 170. There's a KO on Tapu Lele. If one of the energy on there is strong, that's 190. You're getting a KO on Boswell. And if there's a second strong or a couple of Red Jirok, you're doing 210. There's a KO on Golisopod, which is, of course, one of your big threats. But do please bear in mind, the calculations I've just given you are based on your opponent having one energy in their hand. If they got two energy in their hand, you're doing 240 damage. And the only thing you're not KOing is something like a Metagross with 250 HP. And let's face it, ladies and gentlemen, that's if you've got none of these extra things which allow fighting Pokemon to do more damage. And we all know that that's ludicrous. A single Regirock. And you're getting a KO on a Metagross if they've got two energy in hand. That's nice. Now, there are a couple other things to remember here. First of all, you get to see your opponent's hand. Even if they've got no energy, and I'm not saying it's a good use of your GX attack to just see your opponent's hand, but even in the worst case scenario, you get to see their hand. Maybe you want to be sure before you use this attack, might I draw your attention to the, in my opinion, underutilized Gumshoes GX. I did a video about that as well, actually. I'll pop a link in the description for that as well. Gumshoes just allows you to look at their hand with the quite nicely named Search the Premises ability. So maybe you use this ability, and if your opponent's got enough energy in their hand, you use a GX attack, and if not, you don't. Because if you can find two energy in their hand, this gets very, 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 very good very, 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 very quickly. Now, of course, maybe your opponent's got 58 energy in hand. I mean, they won't. But in theory, with one active Pokemon, one prize card remaining, and every other card in their hand, they could have 58 energy in hand. And times that by 120, and you're getting to 6,960 damage. Now, you can play around and add a whole bunch more damage to that. That it's not something I'm going to go through in this video, though I can make an extra video if you want me to going through some of the more ridiculous calculations. But if anyone wants to have a go with those calculations, that, ladies and gentlemen, is what the comment section is there for. Now, at this stage, I should remind you about Bonnie. And Bonnie is a supporter card coming out, which says that Diegard GX can use its GX attack this turn, even if you've already used a GX attack. Now, we talked about it before in the context of the 100% Zygarde GX, but the fact is both of these cards are called Zygarde GX. That means you can only have four in combination of them in your deck, but it also means that Bonnie will work just as well for this 50% Zygarde as it will for the 100% Zygarde. And I've said this card as a whole is fine, but the GX attack... That, ladies and gentlemen, can get very, 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 very good very, 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 very quickly. I am a huge fan of the GX attack here. Maybe you just play this as a one-off in other Zygarde decks. 
Maybe it's attacking decks that are playing Max Elixir. Maybe you play it with Ninja Boy. But either way, if you just want this for the GX attack, there are plenty of games where you're going to be able to get use out of it. And maybe your opponent goes, ha ha ha, I'm going to discard my energy so you can not do your attack and do lots of damage. Or maybe they go, I'm going to play an end that I don't really want to play so I can get a new hand with fewer energy cards in. And I've made this point in many videos before. As soon as your opponent is hurting themselves to hurt you, that gives you a huge advantage because your opponent is not playing the game like they want to play. They are playing the game to try and stop you. And as soon as they're trying to stop you, rather than doing what they want to be doing, that, that's a win for you, ladies and gentlemen. But overall, I'm going to give this card four wassies. First attack is not good. Second attack is interesting. GX attack is great. Plus, you've got Bonnie to reuse it. Plus, it's techable into so many decks that we're using at the moment and will be using in the future. I think a four wassy card is one that I do expect to see a fair amount of play. And this is one of those cards, not unlike Evil Tal and Xerneas that we looked at the other day. The card's okay. But the GX attack, or oh, the GX attack is good. But maybe you disagree with me. Maybe you think four Wossies is overly generous. Maybe you think it should be a five Wossie card. Ladies and gentlemen, that's why there's a comment section. Go nuts. But be nice. Make sure you like this video, subscribe to this channel, follow me on Twitter at the Wossie, and Twitch for some live action at twitch.tv slash ptcgradio. If you want to support the channel, get some bonus podcasts and so on, you can do so by going to patreon.com slash ptcgradio. But by far the most important thing as always is to look after yourselves until next time. Thank you very much for watching. My name is Ross and you've been watching PTCG Radio.